Maddie was three years old when we found out she had bilateral Wilms tumour. That's tumours in both of her kidneys. We all met Maddie in our own individual ways, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and then Maddie kind of brought us all together yeah. and we created our own little friend group from it. <laughs> <laughs> she was given only a few months to live at that point. Um, but they said there was a chance she could beat it. Two years later, she was still with us and was given the all clear to have a kidney transplant. She was inspirational, really. Yeah. She was... Never she, saw her cry? No, never. She was strong. Maddie was three years old when we found out she had bilateral Wilms tumour. That's tumours in both of her kidneys. She started chemotherapy straight away and quickly lost her left kidney. We thought we'd saved the right, she went into remission, but six months later we discovered it was back again. So she had more chemotherapy, high dosage chemo and stem cell reinfusion. Again, we thought we'd saved the right kidney, but it wasn't to be. And by December 20, five she lost her remaining kidney and went into dialysis. She was given only a few months to live at that point um, but they said there was a chance she could beat it. Two years later she was still with us and was given the all clear to have a kidney transplant. She was on dialysis at this point three times a week going to Southampton every week. Her school was two days a week and an hour while she was on treatment and that was it. We thought she would get a transplant fairly quickly, however, three years later, she was still waiting and it was then discovered she had a heart condition. So she was taken off the transplant list and they started talking to Great Ormond Street about a heart transplant and kidney transplant. Luckily, we were referred to the home hemodialysis unit and they took Maddie on and we were able to bring a machine home and dialyse her here overnight and her heart condition reversed. So off we went again thinking, great, we can have a transplant now and a routine operation to put a new line uh, for her dialysis that goes into her neck discovered she had thyroid cancer. We all met Maddie in our own individual ways sort of thing. Um, and then Maddie kind of brought us all together yeah. and we created our own little friend group from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met her in, must have been in seven, she was on my bus. Um, and we like quickly discovered we were like born on the same day and we were really good friends. And we just kind of grew from there. And we had a lot of ups and downs, but we got through it all, always. Yeah. Mine's kind of like the same, we just kind of, we were in all the same classes in year seven and we, we were put next to each other a lot and we got talking and we were just really good friends from then on, really. Yeah, me and Maddie, we, we mainly met like in year ten through drama and other classes we were in together, but even in that short time that we were there together we became really close friends and yeah. So, uh, when they found out that it was a very rare type of adult cancer, um, the odds of her long-term survival were very, very low. We knew this, but we gave it every shot, so they took the thyroid out, gave her treatment, and we thought we'd done it. Um, but it came back again, and she had six weeks radiotherapy, a new type of radiotherapy at um, University College London Hospital um, and off we went again for the two years waiting to see if she'd beaten it. Um, in March 2015 we were given the all clear and I was tested to give my kidney and on the 1st of May last year I was told that I could give my left kidney to her. Three weeks later after a routine abdominal scan they found that the tumours had gone all through her lungs and she was now terminal. Maddie's first reaction to the news was to cry obviously but then she squared her shoulders back and said I've got to live what time I've got left. So 
She was given two months if she had no treatment and she was determined not to have any treatment that would make her ill. She wanted her time left to be as good as she could make it. She was inspirational, really. Yeah. She was... Never she, saw her cry. No, never. She was strong. She'd like, never want to cry. And she'd never want us to cry. If she saw us cry, she'd tell us to stop it. Or she'd punch her arm or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was really quite violent. <laughs> Inspirational. I mean, everybody talks about that. She was quirky. She was odd. She was funny. Um, she was a loyal friend. Um, she was caustic with her put downs. She was a typical teenager in her stroppiness, but um, she had a feistiness about her. She wouldn't give in for anything. She stop crying. She, it wouldn't. It would It would probably be a sort of a sassy look, wouldn't it? Yes, she'd roll her eyes. Yes, it's always. It was, just, it was always the rolling of the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you couldn't cry in front of her because she would tell you off and you'd have to pay a pound into the pot. She would charge us a pound every time she found us crying. She would charge us a pound because she couldn't stand people weeping around her. She didn't want people to feel sorry for her. She loved, she was a very outdoorsy person. Like she loved to go out to the fair or any local events. She'd always want us to come with her and like go to them. She'd always love to talk about boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she <laughs> always oh, got he's so hot. Oh, he's yeah. hot as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she called him. <her. laughs> I couldn't speak for about half an hour because I didn't know how I felt. I just, it was like a whole range of emotions. Yeah, it was just kind of overpowering, really. Mm. Like, but at the same time, you didn't want to like, you didn't want to weaken because obviously that's, you know. You didn't want to change your friendship with no, her at all. Of course you didn't. You just, you, you, you had to deal with it, but at the same time, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> when she was gone, um, just anger that I'd never see her again, that she would never make me laugh again, that she would never look at me and roll her eyes again. She'd never hold my hand. And I'd never get her to see, I'd never get to see her grow up and do the things she so wanted to do. Well, luckily we found out at school, so we were all together. And um, we were just taken into this random assembly in period one. Um, I think we were all in English. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we got taken out of English and taken to a, a class assembly, which we weren't told about, which was quite unexpected. And then... Um, we sat down and we knew something was wrong immediately, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, because um, Mr the... Blackman looked at us three, and like, well, us four, because of Polly, and then... And it was rag day, so all the teachers were, like, dressed up, and there was Miss Beach stood in a banana costume at the front. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, she said it, and I just, I don't know. We just all burst out crying that we had to leave the assembly. Literally, we all yeah. we were taken out and we had to, um, yeah, we were sent home. We sp we spent the next couple of days together. Yeah, yeah. But we just, we didn't want to leave each other. We just couldn't really face it without each other. Really, no. we'd gone so far together, we couldn't leave it. Really. Our mums were really supportive as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Debbie's helped us a lot get through yeah. this. Yeah.
10 years time I would love Clever to be a known charity in all of the hospitals around the country that they know if they need something for a ward or a certain child who has educational needs that they can come to our charity and then we will try to help them. That's what I would really love. We want to do that, yeah. Yeah. Definitely want to <coughs> encourage people. Yeah, we want definitely the younger generations as well. We want to get involved. And seeing as Maddie have very much struggled with um, being educated while she was in and out of hospital all her life, um, you know, she was still able to get really good grades actually because she was a very hard worker when it came to school. Yeah, she, she always wanted, home, yeah, she always, she always wanted the good grades, and um, you know, we we thought that um, you know the charity cover is like a really good chance for other kids to be able to be educated in school. There's loads of stuff I'd like to say to her. Yeah. I'd have like five pages worth I want to say to her. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know about these two, but I don't know. Mm. Probably along the long lines of goodbye, sister. <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably just thank her for like everything. She's made me see like like cancer in a new way because although my auntie had cancer we weren't that close to my aunt so it wasn't like it didn't affect me as much but then Maddie came along and it just affected me like it hit me like a big yellow school bus where so just like it like, like to say thank you to her for like showing me what it's like and yeah <laughs> like yeah <laughs>